Kim Bay 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 because they are very much more represented in the media. So here in this letter to Kim Ji, Paul says, Paul gives a lot of um, guidelines of what will happen towards the end. Now, I know that if we ask, we say we're in the end times. But they've been saying it for thousands of years now, and that's the truth. As I said to someone, I mean, as we were preparing yesterday, I said the end times started the day Jesus Christ ascended to heaven. The last days started the day Jesus Christ ascended to heaven. Because when Jesus will come again, nobody knows. Whether it's today, whether it's next year, whether it's in 10 years, whether it's in 50 years, nobody knows. But we know for certain that Jesus will come again. Over the next two, three, four weeks, we'll be looking at things surrounding the last days. So today we are looking at perilous times. Next week we'll be looking at the second coming of Christ and so on. And it's important for us as Christians that we do not forget this because we can be so busy in our everyday activities that we forget the most important part of our story, which is the second coming of Christ. The translated word for perilous in 2 Timothy 3.1 is chalipos, which means troublesome, dangerous, harsh, fierce, full of risk, hazardous, harmful, dreadful, threatening. The term last days refers to the period between Christ's ascension into heaven and his second coming. Perilous times constitute part of the last days, yeah, last days events, to wrap up the world, to pave way for the new heaven and earth. The last days is not just a prophecy. It started from the days of the Bible, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 2. So you can see the last days started from the days of the Bible, 1 John 2, 18 to 19. If you can put 1 John 2, 18 to 19 on the screen, technical, if that's possible. 1 John 2, 18 to 19. The importance of prophecy and warning against perilous times cannot be overemphasized because we are living in the fulfillment. You can see the key word there is fulfillment. We are living in the fulfillment of perilous times. So we are fulfilling what is already been written. There's nothing you or I, uh, you, or, uh, you and I can do about it. It will happen. Jesus will come again. And the events leading to the coming of Christ will happen. The purpose of this study, therefore, is to carefully consider the writing of Paul to uh, Timothy in 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 5, as we've read, on the things that characterize the perilous times and the position every believer, believer in Christ should take. So first and foremost, we have read what Paul said, the uh, the things that will characterize the perilous time. Can we just go, we've read it together. Can somebody, no, I'll take, since we read it together, come on, guys. 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 5 that we just read. Paul said, during the last days, what will happen? Lovers of yourself. Come on, we just read it now, come on. Lovers of money, uh-huh. Ungrateful, Ungrateful. uh-huh. Yeah. Blasphemers. Yeah. Yeah, me, you are doing. Lost. Lost. Unthankful, natural affection, without natural affection, and so on. Now, in all these things, which one of them can you point to one that we've not seen today? Is there any one that we've not seen today in the world that we live in today? Is there any one of these things that we've read in 2 Timothy 3 1 to 5 that we've not seen today? Is there anyone? So it means that we have seen all these things, even in our very own eyes. Which means that <laughs> there's nothing more to fulfill. It will just continue like that. Do you, do you understand what I mean? If there was something that we've not seen now, we'll say, okay, this one we've not seen, it may be to happen next year, in 10 years' time, whatever. But all these things are clearly happening today. So Paul says this. But you see, it's not just Paul who says it. So I'll read it here. It says, lovers of themselves, that is self centered. Unfortunately, we see some of these things even in ourselves as Christians, even as in church, which we should not. Covetous, craze for wealth or material things, or lust of the eyes, boasters, proud, blasphemers. I was saying yesterday in our study, blasphemers are so common today. Uh, even with us Christians, the name of Jesus has become a swear word. Which is quite sad, because the Lord says it clearly, that we must not use his name in vain. Disobedient to parents. I mean, I can go on and on on that. 
unthankful, people who do not appreciate God and people for, their good, for the good deeds, unholy, sinful people who are not pleasing to God, people without natural affection or love for other people, and so on. And we can go on and on and on and on. So my question is, why is it important for us as Christians to study this letter, or not this letter, but everywhere it's written about the last days? I'd like to hear our thoughts. Ibubi, are you ready? Who wants to tell us, why do you think it's important for you and I as Christians to know this? There's someone behind you, Ibubi. So we don't fall into traps. Okay, so we don't fall into traps, yeah? Why is it important? Thank you very much. Anyone? There's someone at the back, Ibubi. Don't follow the devil. So that we don't follow the devil, okay? Thank you very much. There's someone at the back, Ibobe. From the parable of Jesus mm. about the sowing of the uh, seed, mm -hmm. he told us that there will come a time that we will get so busy that if we are not careful, the things of the world mm. will choke the seed, which is the word. Mm. And this is in the time of the last days. Mm. In the time of the last days, if you are not careful, if we as, as believers are not careful, mm. the laws of the land, we, the, the ways of walking, mm. the way things should be done, mm. it will not look as if it's like where they say that in a place where a uh, crime goes on, mm. the man who does right is not the it's criminal. It's not the criminal. Yeah. So, that is what Paul is trying to say. Watch mm. out that when it comes to a time they are calling you a criminal, be mm. careful. Mm. Maintain your stand. Amen. Thank you very much for sharing that. And that's very important, especially in the world that we live in. On Wednesday, uh, during Bible study, we talked about the kingdom of heaven. As children of God, Jesus told us, he said, we are in the world, but we are not of the world. You and I, as Christians, live in a kingdom where God is king. And like my brothers rightly said, there may be some things that contradict the word of God, even whilst we are here. But Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, he said, Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you. He says, Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for so they did to the prophets that were before you. So it's important for us to understand as Christians that we the, in the world that we live in, our God is the king, is the one that has the final say in the things that we do. In the things that we run after. Remember, in the things that we run after, in the things that we desire, our God has the final say, should have the final say. We cannot be carried away. And that's why it's important for us to keep reminding ourselves of this topic of perilous times. Because it's very easy to get carried away. And it's very easy to forget. Why? Because some people will tell you, oh, they've been saying it for about 2,000 years now. So one, all the reasons that have been given are correct, but I want to add one more to that. One of the reasons why we must also study it is so that we, 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 we should not be afraid. You know, I've seen Christians, ah, all this is, no, we should not be afraid. Why? Because if the God who has revealed that these things will happen is our God, is the king of the kingdom that we serve, so we cannot be afraid. We cannot even be afraid. Why? Because our God will, he has given us his assurance. Can somebody please read Matthew chapter 24? Uh, Matthew 24, we won't read the whole thing, but if you can read 11 to 13. 11 to 13. Can somebody please read? If you want to read, raise your hand. Matthew 24, 11 to 13. It will be, come on. Matthew 24, 11 to 13. Mm -hmm. And because lawless men will abound, mm -hmm. Mm. But he who endures to the end mm. shall be saved. Shall be saved. So he says, because these things will abound. Lord, uh, um, he said, he, uh, and because iniquity shall abound. And is it not happening today? He said, the law, I mean, the love of many will grow cold, even within us as Christians. We see a lot of, we say, good, is it a lot of um, good things happening to bad people? No, is it? Yeah, good things happening to bad people people, and then bad things happening to good people. And then you're wondering, ah, what's the, the people are saying, why, am I, why, why, why is all these things happening? But you've got to understand, 
that we are not Christians because we want good things to happen to us. We are Christians. Why? Why are you a Christian? And that's why we must understand that. I'm coming to me. We must understand that. I'm not asking us to an answer here. Answer for yourself. Why are you a Christian? Why am I a Christian? It's a topic that we must look at one, one of these days. Yes, good things will happen. Yes, the Bible tells us, gives us all these promises as Christians. But there's a fundamental reason why we are Christians. It's to reconcile us back to our Father. Fellowship with our Father. And that's why Jesus went to the cross. And he says when he came back, I mean, when he, when he was going to ascend, he said, now the responsibility falls on you and I to go forth and do what? Disciple all nations. You see, David had a son. We know the story with Bathsheba. And, of course, because of what he did, uh, the son was ill. And David was fasting and praying for the son to be healed. But it did not happen. The son passed. And David began to eat and enjoy. I mean, well, just live this normal life. People were surprised. Ah, David, when the son was ill, you were fasting and praying. Now that he has passed, you are eating and whatever. David said, don't worry. He said, I'm going to meet him. He said, he has just gone ahead of me. So what David was saying, he, he had an assurance in his heart that at some point he will meet. Uh, uh, this, this world was not the, is not the, final, it's not the final place. And I think sometimes as Christians, we forget that sometimes. Sometimes we forget, we, feel, we live life as if this is the all in all. Okay, maybe you live up to 100 years or, I don't know, 120. What, who is the oldest person in the world today? Today, today. Maybe 100 and what? 11. Okay, so maybe we live 111. Or maybe you even be like uh, Methuselah. You live 969. It is nothing. 969, Methuselah, is nothing compared to eternity. Nothing. It's just like a drop in the ocean to eternity that we are all going to spend when we leave this place. So why are we, why is, why is the, why, why do we put so much emphasis on what God has not sent us to do here? You see, I always say the most important thing for us here is to focus on the work that God has given you. It's for me to focus on the work that God has given me. For everybody, that work is different. For my brother here, it may be different for what God has given me to do. It's a waste of my time to look at my brother and say, ah, this is my brother, look at the way he's shining. All these things that he's doing, then I want to be like that. It's a waste of my time. Because at the end of the day, when we stand before God in heaven, he will ask you, the work that I gave you to do, did you do it? He will ask me. And that's why it's important, the work that we have been given to do, to focus on it. Yes, there are challenges. And I'm not saying there are no challenges. There are challenges. Jesus faced challenges. Jesus faced every single day. There are people that would insult him. There are people that would laugh at him. And even at the end of the day, he was killed for his purpose, for the purpose that he came to fulfill. The disciples, early disciples, many of them were killed for fulfilling the purpose that were called to fulfill. You and I may face, we will face challenges. Jesus said it. I'm not, it's not a cause. Jesus said in this world you will face, and I know we don't like that part of the Bible, but it is in the Bible. In fact, it's not just in the Bible, it's Jesus that said it. But he said, be of what? Why? overcome the world. So you're not fighting a battle. You're fighting, fighting a battle that is won already. And that is the angle from which I face every challenge. When God gives me a responsibility and I face challenges, I go into that responsibility. Honestly, there are so many. And there are some that I even want to give up. But I thank the God that I serve. Sometimes he will just send a word. It will encourage me again. He will send somebody. They will encourage me again. So it means that the challenges will be there. But he's saying stay focused. Stay focused. Especially now that we live in perilous times. We live in societies or communities where maybe many people don't even know God. If anything, that is where our responsibility lies. How many of us have heard the story of the two shoe salesmen that were sent to a country? The two of them they were sent they, they, I mean, from their shoe company to go to a country to go and sell shoes. 
And both of them got to that country. One of them replied, sent an email back and said, ah, don't waste your time in this place. Nobody's wearing shoes here. We can't sell shoes here. The other one said, what? He said, come quickly, send many shoes. Nobody's wearing shoes. Send shoes, send many shoes. Perspectives are different. In the land where we are living in, you can look at it and say, ah, nobody believes God yet. I don't want to believe yet. I want to go to a place where they believe God. But you can also look at it and say, ah, the harvest is plenty. God, please send laborers to your vineyard. And that's the prayer that Jesus said we should, pray, uh, we should praise. Before, but before you pray for that, I pray for that laborers. Ask yourself, am I a laborer in God's vineyard? Am I working to win souls for Christ? I think there was a drama, where Sister Juliet? That drama acted last year. Was it last year or two years ago? And in that drama, somebody unfortunately went to hellfire. And in hell he was screaming, calling all his Christian friends. Why did you not tell me? Why did you not tell me? And many of us, all of us, we are friends. My family members. How many times do we pray for our family members that are yet to know Christ? How many times do we pray for our friends? By name. I'm not talking about general prayer. How many times do we even, even general prayer, pray for our friends at work, at school, that are yet to know Christ? We live in perilous times, yes. But you and I have an advantage. An advantage that this book that I was written many, many, many years ago told us that it would happen. So we cannot act from the place of fear. In fact, we act from the place of confidence. And we continue the work that the Lord God has given us. So, believers, watch out. What did Paul say in 2 Timothy that we read earlier on? What did he say at the end? Verse 5. 2 Timothy 3, verse 5. What did Paul say? Uh, sorry, uh, the, the, not verse 5. Where is it from such, run away? What verse is that? It's 5, right? Aha, yeah, verse 5, thank you. Five, five, 5B. Say, from such, turn away. It is not the time when we see things like this, or people like that, that we begin to say, we want to be like them. I was talking with my brother this morning. I said they are the ones that should try to be like us. Because we should be bringing people into the kingdom of God, not the other way around. God has called us out of the kingdom of darkness into his kingdom of light. 2 Peter, uh, Peter 1.9, I think. So it is now our responsibility to win others. And how do we win others? From the way we live our lives. From the way we speak. And then even talking to them directly, when God gives you the opportunity, there are people that God will give you the opportunity to talk to. There are God, people that God will give you the, 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 the window to speak to them about Christ. It, come, it will come in different ways for different people. I shared the story, I mean, I think it was during New Watch Night, and I shared with you about my colleague at work who went to the hospital for some reason and found out, and they said they found something, something, it was like a, in his, in his x-ray, and they said, I'll go and do more, whatever, whatever. And this guy was distraught. And every time we have a conversation, we're talking on teams, it's like, oh, he's, he said, he, he told me at one point, he broke down, and he started crying. Because for him, he said, well, I don't, whatever it is, now, whether it's cancer or whatever, he was, he was distraught. And I said to him, I'm not a doctor. There's nothing else I can do for you but to pray for you. And he said, please do. And I give God the glory some weeks later. He came back to me. He was rejoiced. He was happy. He said, ah, they've gone to do it. And there was nothing. And the point I'm trying to make here is that God will always give a window. Always put a window for somebody. It may not be in that same angle. It may be something else. But there is a void inside of man. Every man. That only God can fill. There's a void inside of every man. Some fill it with drugs. Some fill it with so many other things. But God will open a window. And you might be that person that can talk to that other, I mean, that can help that person. That God has um, selected to speak to that person at that time. 
You know, when we are sowing seeds, my brother used the parable of the sower earlier on. When we are sowing seeds, we, God brings us at different aspects of somebody's life. Some, some people, you might be the one that will sow the seed. Some people, you might be the one that will tender. Somebody else has sown the seed. You are just the one that will tender as the seed is growing to so make sure that it is not choked. And for some people, it might be the one that you are the one that will reap the harvest. It doesn't matter who. At the end of the day, what matters is that that person is brought in the kingdom of God. That's why Paul said, he said, uh, Paul plants, Apollo waters. Everybody has a responsibility. And that's why everywhere we go, he said, Jesus was so anointed that he was anointed by the Holy Spirit. Everywhere he went, he was doing what? That's why as Christians, we must, it's our natural response to do good. Because it is what God would use. It could be what God wants to use to win souls. So we live in perilous times. But it is not for you and I to be afraid. Rather, it is for you and I to, to be more aware of the work that needs to be done. So we must separate from the association or company of people who exhibit the above stated characteristics. We must avoid all forms of carnality and false doctrines. We must be watchful and prayerful to guide against deception. And we know that there's deception happening now and temptation to sin. We must surrender daily to the Holy Spirit and be very sensitive to his leadership on all issues. So even as God is using it for others, even for yourself, you must be watchful. I must be watchful. One question or contribution. One question or contribution before we round up. Any question or contribution? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My question is going to go this way. Looking at the list of um, what we are supposed to, um, you know, walk away from, not to partake in. It says exhibiting or having a form of godliness, mm. but denying the power thereof. Mm. People whose attitude shows that they are very religious mm. and religious, but in true life, they are just pretenders. Mm. I want to say that I am not a judge. You and I should search our hearts. Mm. Are we not in the category, or which category do we belong? Mm. Because uh, what we see these days is that many of us play church. We just come to church. Mm. We don't really follow the heartbeat of God, which says in Matthew 22 and verse 37, Jesus said to them, love the Lord thy God with all of your heart, with all, with all, all of your might, with and everything that is you. And the second one says, love your neighbor as yourself. Now, we see us congregating, even from right inside here. And we, the traits that's been listed here is oozing out of so many lives. I think this calls for us to make some changes in our lives, starting Amen. from me, Amen. starting from me, because we shouldn't just come and, um, you know, perilous times. If we don't want to be swept under the carpet, mm. if we don't want to be a part of the kingdom of hell, if you don't want to be part of the people that are not rapturable, if you want to walk consciously before the Lord and truly love him, we need to take care of this area. Thank you, God bless. Amen. Thank you very much. That's a very timely warning. You can see, that's why we read Matthew 24, 13, earlier on, where Jesus said, it is he who endures to the end. He said, that is the person that shall be saved. You know, when you go on an airplane, and the hostess comes, and they start telling you about all the safety, this thing. what's the first thing they say? They say, God forbid, if there's anything, they don't say God forbid, child. but they say, if anything happens, what do you do? Make sure you use your before you start thinking of any other person, use your own face mask. The same thing it is with this. Before you start thinking, of, think about yourself. Ask yourself: Am I exhibiting a form of godliness, but there's, I'm uh, neglecting the power of thereof? Am I just coming to church? And I tell people, church is not just Sunday, Sunday. Church is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Because every moment of our lives, God wants to fellowship with us. And that's a very important thing that we need to check. Shall we just bow our heads?
And in just 10 seconds, just 10 seconds, ask the Lord God to carry you on his wings. Ask him to carry you on his wings and not fall by. So that you will not fall by even in these perilous times. So that like Jesus said, it is he who endures to the end. But make sure you do a self-reflection. If there's anything that you know that Jesus needs to take away from you. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He said, take my yoke. My yoke is easy. He said, but bring your own yoke. Jesus will carry your own burden for you. But he has a, he has a yoke for us to, 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 to hang on to. So if there's anything, do a self-reflection, even for a few seconds, and ask the Lord God Almighty. Ask the Lord God Almighty to help you. To help you. Perhaps, like our mommy said, perhaps you realize in your life that you are just there are some things that you know that it is not you are not aligned with the word of God. People may not know, but God knows. Ask Jesus to help you. Ask him to help you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, church. Please let's um stand up for our opening prayer. I just um, want us to just be with the heart of thanksgiving, just um, thanking God for our lives, thanking him for seeing us through from the beginning of this year. Now we're in the month of April, just thanking for life, thanking for being an intentional God in our lives, in our family. Just thanking for being a good God, thanking for your health. Thank him for being there for you. Thank him for strength. Just thank him. Just thank him. Because this month alone, we have lost some people, but God has kept us alive. Let's just begin to thank him for our lives, for our family, for being a good God, for being a good God, for being a good God, for being an intentional father, for being a loving father, for being there for you, even when you not call upon him, but he has been there for you. So, oh Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Lord, for my life. Thank you, Lord, for my family. Thank you, Lord, for being a good God. Thank you, Lord, for seeing me through day by day. Thank him for strength. Thank him for strength. Juggling one activity or the other, your career, your marriage, your home, your kids. Just thank him for strength day by day. Father, thank you, Lord, for strength. Thank you, Lord, for our mental health. Thank you, Lord, for being God. Thank you, Lord, for protection. Thank you, Lord, for deliverance. Thank you, Lord, for restoration. Thank you, Lord, for joy. Thank you, Lord, for peace in our lives, peace that we experience day by day. Father, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, for your peace. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being a loving father. Thank you, Lord, for being a loving father. Thank you, Lord, for strength. Thank you, Lord, for our finances, even with the whole recession. Oh, Lord, but God, you have been there. You have been there for us. We have food to eat. We have the ability to eat the food. We have a roof over our heads. We can wear our clothes. We can come out. We can move. We can move our hands. We can move our legs. Father, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for what you are doing in our lives, in our family. Oh, Lord, just want to say thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for being there for us. When we call upon your name, you answer us. Thank you, Lord, for our finances. Thank Thank you for our marriages. Thank you for our children. Oh Lord, thank you for the church. Oh Lord, thank you for the growth. Oh Lord, in the church, we are just here to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, that we are all alive. Oh Lord, thank you, Lord, that we have not lost anyone in the church. We just want to say thank you for healing. For healing, oh Lord, thank you. For the ones in the hospital, oh Lord, we just want to say thank you, oh Lord, for healing. For those that were at home, oh Lord, God Almighty, want to thank you, oh Lord, for healing. Thank you, oh Lord, for your protection. Father, I just want to say thank you. For the month of January, thank you. For February, March, now we're in April, oh Lord, thank you. For last week, oh Lord, thank you. That we ought to juggle one activity or the other. We just want to say thank you. Just thank him. Thank him for his mercy. Thank you for his mercy we experience day by day. His mercies are new every morning. Morning. But I just want to say thank you for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. We experience day by day, oh Lord. Thank you, Lord. Help us, oh Lord, to take your mercy for granted. Help us, oh Lord, not to take your mercy, oh Lord, for granted, oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Help us, oh Lord, to live a life, oh Lord, that glorifies your name, whether in private, whether in public, oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, oh Lord, help us, oh Lord, not to take your mercy, oh Lord, for granted, oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Help us, oh Lord, to be intentional about you, oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, help us, oh 
Lord, to extend this mercy to ourselves. Let's extend, oh Lord, this mercy to ourselves. To also learn to forgive ourselves, oh Lord, because you have forgiven us, oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. That anyone, oh Lord, that hasn't forgiven themselves, oh Lord, God Almighty, oh Lord, they should be able to extend mercy, oh Lord, to themselves. And also extend mercy, oh Lord, to others, oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. For the help us, oh Lord, to extend mercy, oh Lord, to others, oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Help us, oh Lord, to love one another. Help us, oh Lord, to live in unity. Help us, oh Lord, to live in peace, oh Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, in our lives, in our home, in our marriages, in our career, in our job, oh Lord, even in the church, oh Lord, help us, oh Lord, to live in unity. Help us, oh Lord, to extend mercy. Help us, oh Lord, to extend grace. Help us, oh Lord, to live a life of love, oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, help us, oh Lord, to live a life of love that when people see us, they see you. When people see us, they see your love, oh Lord, in our lives, oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's extend love. You know what we do? Let's not expect anything from any when we extend, oh Lord, this love, oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, oh Lord, turn, oh Lord, any heart of stone, oh Lord, to the heart of flesh, oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, oh Lord, for a forgiving spirit, a forgiving spirit, oh Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, let's just begin to commit, oh Lord, our week, oh Lord, into God's hands, that the week is blessed, that the week is blessed, that we'll see the hand of God in our week, oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, that we'll be intentional about God, oh Lord, this week, that we'll trust him with everything, with everything this week, oh Lord, we're going to trust him, oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, that we surrender the week, we surrender the remaining days in the month of April, we surrender the remaining days in this year into God's hand, that we'll see him completely. Oh Lord, that we will not lose anyone, oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. That He will continue to protect us, oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Our hearts, oh Lord, might will focus on Him, oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. That we will not, oh Lord, divert, oh Lord, from Him because of the things of this world, because we are worrying, oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. That we will focus on Him, we will focus on Him, we will focus on Him because He will never leave us, He will never for um, forsake us, oh Lord. That we will focus on Him, oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. That we are blessed, declare blessed upon your life, declare blessing upon your family, declare blessing upon your children that you're blessed, you're blessed, you're going out, you're blessed, you're coming in and you're blessed, everything about you is blessed that you're fruitful, that you will stand before kings and not before mean men, that God's your light, your path will continue to shine brighter and brighter every day in the mighty name of Jesus, that you're fruitful oh Lord in the mighty name of Jesus, you're blessed the works of your hand is blessed, that you receive peace, you receive strength in the mighty name of Jesus, that your names will mention in rooms for good oh Lord in the mighty name of Jesus, your destiny help us who locate you and anyone you're meant to help oh Lord, you're going to locate them oh Lord this week in the mighty name of Jesus, that the month of April is blessed. The month of April is blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's begin to commit the service into God's hands that there will not be any form of distraction into their service, that we'll see God mightily, His power mightily in the service, that there will be healing, there will be restoration in the service, there will be deliverance in the service, there will be breakthrough in the service, that every one of us will live with one testimony or the other, O oh Lord, in this service, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, that God will take charge from the choir to the hospitality to the technical to the prayer to the children, that God will take charge in the mighty name of Jesus, that would we'll feel Him, will feel His presence, who feel his presence, no form of distraction, oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, that he will take the glory, he will accept our thanksgiving, he will accept our worship, he will accept our prayers, he will accept everything, oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, that will help us, oh Lord, to be intentional about him, oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, thank you, O oh Lord, for today. Thank you, Lord, for answered prayers. Thank you, Lord, for today's service, O oh Lord, that you do what only you alone can do, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. And we commit, O oh Lord, this week into your hands that is blessed, is blessed, and is blessed. And you do what only you alone can do. And you continue to guide our hearts, guide our hearts, O oh Lord, in these dangerous times, that, O oh Lord God Almighty, that will not be influenced, but we will focus on you. We will focus on you. And you're going to be our plan A and plan to plan Z, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. And we declare this service open in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let your Holy 
He rescued my soul. His blood has covered my sins. I believe. I believe. My shame. My shame is taken away. And my pain is healed in his name.
When you say praise the Lord, we are praising the Almighty, creator of the entire universe. And when you read the book of Ezekiel, you read the book of Daniel, you read the book of Revelation, you will see clearly how the angels in heaven, the elders in heaven, how they worship the eternal King of glory. What that says to us is that you and I, it's a great privilege to be a part of that congregation so that when we say praise the Lord, you know that it is not just an ordinary thing. It is not just, oh, hallelujah. No. We are talking to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Don't worry, I won't ask you to say it now. But I will say it. I will ask you to praise God very soon. Hallelujah. It's testimonies time. One of the ways we praise God is via our testimonies where we share some of the good things, the great things that the Lord God has done in our lives. And I can always tell everyone, even here, being here today is a testimony. Uh, you know, when God does something in our life, we say, oh, God is good. And I say, whether he does it or he does not do it, God is still good. Because the Bible says, it says he is good all the time. So there's someone here who wants to share a testimony with us. And if you don't mind, I'd just like us to put our hands together as we welcome Mommy Obadina. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord! Um, yesterday, I, I was, I don't know the word to use, it was sudden. And you know why we were, we were praying, why the ladies were praying in the morning. And at the end of the prayer, something just came up and I said, oh, it looks like there's good news coming for somebody. You know, we just saw, I said, we, I saw like a water and pouring on the dry ground. I said, good news is coming. And then we ended the prayer. And I just said, amen to myself. And I said, everybody say amen. And on a Saturday, and I was wondering. I, was, I went out, football and everything, the normal Saturday activities. And you know what? You won't believe exactly 21.39 on a Saturday. It's still, it's still like, a, a, I, couldn't, I can't believe you are now. There is something my daughter applied for eight years ago. It's going to be eight years. And um, we are, I had already given up on it. 
But I opened it up again few about three weeks ago. And normally if you open it, it should be six to one years before you have response. And I just saw that message coming in. He said, congratulations. He said, you have been approved. You have been given. And I looked up and I said, on a Saturday, there is no thing God cannot do to bring you your sudden miracle. And you know, while I was looking and I stood up and I said, and I, it's 2139 on a Saturday. And I just said, I sent a message to her. And I just heard her screaming, shouting. And I want to give God all the praise because his word will never go back without being fulfilled. It was actually sudden. It was a testimony. It was something that I myself cannot believe. I want to give God all the praise. I want to say thank you. What we did for eight years and we couldn't achieve, he did within three weeks. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Since the vision is for an appointed time, it may seem like a delay to us, but to God, it will happen just at the right time. It will happen when? Just at the right time. I don't know who is looking up to God for one thing or the other. Hold on to God. He will not disappoint. He will not disappoint. Father, we thank you. Once again, you have shown us that you are more than able to surprise us. We bless your holy name. Because at the right time, you have made this possible. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, because you have also encouraged somebody here today to continue to hold on and not to give up. Blessed be your holy name. Take all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Uh, you're all welcome to the Redeemed Christian Church of God Cornerstone Parish in Loughborough. Uh, we meet here every uh, Sunday. We meet every Sunday from 11 to 1.30 p.m. And uh, by the grace of God, we're a church. We want to be deeply rooted in Christ. We want to be connected. And we want to impact our community. So if you are joining us, we note that those are our three pillars. To be deeply rooted, to be connected with each other, and to make impact in our community. Uh, I'd like to just share the following announcements, if you don't mind. And uh, every Sunday, like I said, we meet here. We also meet on Wednesdays. We meet online on Wednesdays for Bible study. Last week, we looked at the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. Uh, our Bible study is every Wednesday from 7 o'clock to 8.30 p.m. I want to encourage us to please join. You can join from the comfort of your home. If you need a Zoom link, the ushers can share the Zoom link with you every Wednesday. Every weekday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we meet midnight for one hour to pray. And I want to encourage us also, it's also online, so we can also join from the comforts of our, of our homes. And I know that it may not be easy, I mean, to wake up at that time and pray, but I want to encourage you, um, the Lord God Almighty will help you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Please join, it's again, uh, the same Zoom link that we use for Bible study is the same one we use for uh, mid midweek prayers, and also midnight prayers. So please see the ushers uh, for the Zoom link, or if the technical team can put it on the screen. By the grace of God, um, Festival of Life is, is coming up on the 26th of April. Festival of Life is coming up on the 26th of April in Manchester. Um, we have guest ministers, we have uh, Minister Dusi Oyekon, and we have our General Obasia, uh, Pastor E. E. Adeboe will also be there in Manchester. For those who do not know, uh, Festival of Life is a gathering of all regime, all RCCG churches in the UK, and this will be having it in Manchester. Please, today is the last day if you want to go with the church van. You can go on your own, please. You are free, uh, free to go on your own. If you need the address, please see the usher. They'll give you the address. But if you'd like to go with the church, uh, please, today is the last day put, to put down your name. And there's a reason for that. We, it would help us to plan ahead. If we know we need to um, get a coach or a bigger vehicle or something. Mm -hmm. So please put down your names with the ushers. Also, put down your names and the number of people that are coming with you. So if you're coming with children or you're coming with friends, please put down your names and the number of people that are coming with you. It's free. Uh, we're not charging to take you to Manchester and back. It usually starts at 7 p.m. Um, Pastor said we will leave. Pastor, am I correct? At 6 o'clock. On the day to Manchester, six o'clock. We will get there late, but we have to make room for those who will be walking also on that day. 
So about 6 o'clock. But again, if you want to go on your own, feel free to go uh, any time you want. But the event starts at 7 p.m. and ends at uh, 1 a.m. Starts at 7 p.m. and ends at 1 a.m. in the morning. So we'll leave there at 1 a.m. to return for the return to work, bro. Amen. So please put down your name if you want to go with us. Um, if there are any other announcements, I'll encourage you also to please go on the church website, www.rccg. Uh, rccglboro.org um, and, and we'll share I mean there are a lot of us uh, if there's any announcement that I've missed uh, you'll, find, you'll find them there we also have our youth conference coming up our youth conference is coming up in, in May well, oh, Kedisha is not here today but uh, I'm going to put Olumide on the spot uh, Youth Alive we call it it's an annual youth conference um, for the church it's coming up on the 8th Abangi or something, sorry. Thank you. So Youth Alive is coming up on the, please somebody give me that date, please. I'm trying to find it on my, I know it's May 18th, thank you. May 18th, Youth Alive is coming up on the 18th of May. Please, it's our annual youth conference. Oh, there are flyers, please. If you want the flyers, the ushers can share the flyers with us. But well, please don't just drop them on the floor. Those flyers are meant for you to use to invite your friends. I want to invite every one of us. I know all of us here, we are youths. Yeah? So I want to invite every one of us. <laughs> Some people are looking at me somehow. Let us pray. <laughs> for those that are looking at I said all of us are youths. It's a bit to say amen. <laughs> amen. Uh, even God is even is ancient of this, isn't it? God will be there, and if God is there, you are all invited. So please, let's all be there. Let's invite our friends, let's invite our families, our colleagues. It will be at Fairon Hall. Fairon Hall. Please just get the flyer. The postcode is on the flyer, and uh, join us at Youth Alive 2024. For the Festival of Life, there's a workers' rally. Sorry, I was just trying to find the details for the workers' rally. Lucky, I mean, we don't have to go to Manchester for the workers' rally. So for those who don't know, whenever we have Festival of Life, the day before, we have a workers' rally. So workers' rally is strictly only for workers. So please, if you're a worker here, um, we, encourage, we will be at workers' rally, but the workers' rally will be at Leicester. So please join us as we go to Leicester on the day before, that's 25th, 25th of April for workers' rally. Um, I can't find a flyer here, but if the technical team have it, please put it on the screen for uh, Workers' Rally. So Workers' Rally 25th, and then FOL, Festival of Life itself, is on the 26th, Friday the 26th to Saturday the 27th. God bless you as you attend in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Before I hand over the mic, I'd like us to just do something. You know, we said we want to be deeply connected, deeply rooted, connected, and what? Making impact in our community. But well, we can't be connected if we don't know the people that are around us. So I just want you to, no need to stand up. Just look at somebody on your left, right, if you don't know, the ones you don't know. Yeah, if you know them already, don't talk to them. Look for somebody you don't know and ask them for their names. Yeah, welcome them and ask them for their names. Say, yeah, welcome. Ask a little bit of, ask one or two questions. Ask one or two questions from them. Are they new in bro? How long have they been in bro? Are they enjoying the weather? Yeah? Ask them for their names if you don't know their names. Amen. Ah, uh, that quick. Ah, uh, I can't see some people talking. Benedicta. Look around. Thank you. Ah, why is nobody talking to my brother out there? Eh? Juliano, uh, look behind you. Uh -huh. Ask him for his name. I'll call names though if you're not talking. Adema. What's the name of that brother at the back? Go and ask him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please, let it not end there. After church service, talk more to them. 
Yeah, even as I invite my sister. Praise the Lord. And just to add to the announcement, let's remember safeguarding. Parents in the house, please let's ensure we keep an eye on our children, especially after service. Even as we carry on the catch-up, make sure you're holding them. Don't let them run outside. Praise God. The Lord will continue to look after all of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Do we have anybody worshiping with us for the first time here? Any first timers? Hallelujah. We've got a sister here. Hallelujah. Do you want to stand on your feet, Ma? Anybody else? Church, can we welcome them? Can we welcome them? If you are worshiping with us for the first time, just stand on your feet. Amen. This is Cornerstone, a branch blocked out of fire. We are praying, church. We're heaven bound, transforming lives as we get them. You are welcome in our midst. We pray the Lord God bless you. Your life will never be the same because you came in to our midst today. Cornerstone, this is Cornerstone, a branch of the of fire. We are your praying church, we're heaven bound, transforming lives as we get there. You are welcome in our midst. We pray the Lord God bless you. Your life will never be the same because you came into our midst today. Amen. Hallelujah. Good morning, my sister. Good morning, my sister. You are welcome. My name is Osas. And that's our, where's our pastor? <laughs> and you meet the pastor shortly. You are very, very welcome to our midst. would like to get to know you more. So if you please tell us your name and what you're doing in Loughborough. Mm, my name is Adefunke Oluyemi. Traveled all the way from Lagos, Nigeria for a three-week holiday. Um, and also to see the baby of the house, to say hello to her. So I came in here yesterday night. Oh, you're very welcome, mommy. She's one of our mommies. The daughter, the daughter is like, what do you mean, baby of the house? <laughs> you always be her baby, even when you are a mommy, trust me. My sister. Good morning. I'm Chama Kadeyemi. I moved in Thursday. Got a job in, in Colville. You are welcome, my sister. Church, can we so please remain standing? Please remain standing. Church, can we clap for them as we welcome them? And can we say to them, we love you with the love of the Lord. Amen. And this is our pastor, Pastor Chooks. And you, our pastor, Mrs., is right behind the keyboard amen church can we bow down our heads as we pray for them just speak a word of prayer into their lives they've come to visit another has come she's got a job so she's relocated just speak into their lives just begin to declare say heavenly father thank you for your children bless them lord let them remember this day for good let them remember this day the 14th day of April, 2024, as a significant positive day in their spiritual walk with you, in their journey. Help them, Lord Jesus. Visit them in a special way today, O oh God. Uphold them, strengthen them. Lord, have mercy on them. Lord, be intentional with everything that concerns them. And above all, Lord Jesus, when the time has come, let your word to them be well done, good and faithful servant. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. You're very welcome, ma. Please take your seat. Let's clap for them as they sit down. Thank you. Please don't be in a hurry to leave after the service. Please wait behind. Our wonderful hospitality team would like to give you a befitting treat. Amen. Praise God. It's time for us to take our tithes and our offering, church. It's time to give to our Father. So if you're giving physically, if you want, if you need an envelope, please wave your hands and the ushers will make one available to you. Amen. If you're giving online, technically, if you can please scroll the bank details so you can also give online as well. Prepare your offering. Remember, just try and think if you're giving somebody a gift. You prepare the gift, don't you? You, put it, you wrap the gifts, you put it in a lovely bag. So that's what you're doing right now. So if it's, your, if, your, if it's your dance you're bringing, if it's your heart you're giving, whatever you're bringing to our Father, just begin to prepare. Begin to prepare your mind, prepare your offering, 
the money that you are putting don't just shove it into the envelope put it with grace put it with respect amen and let us stand up on our feet let's stand up on our feet because we are going to come into our father's presence dancing and rejoicing church can we stand amen as we give our offering unto our father let's invite the choir hallelujah what a marvelous god what a marvelous god he has done marvelous things for me what a marvelous God, what a marvelous, he's there to do marvelous things for me. What a marvelous, what a marvelous God, what a marvelous God, he has done marvelous things for me. What a marvelous God, what a marvelous, he's there to do marvelous things for me. The things are impossible, the things that money cannot buy, they are the things he has done for me. What my mother cannot do, what my father could not do, he has done it and again, again. What a marvelous, what a marvelous God, what a marvelous God, he has done marvelous things for me. What a marvelous God, what a marvelous God. He said to do marvelous things for me. Oh, omnipotent God, reliable God, dependable God. Oh, omnipresent He is His name. Oh, what my mother cannot do, what my father could not do, He has done it and again, again. What a marvelous, what a marvelous God, what a marvelous God. He has done marvelous things for me. What a marvelous God. What a marvelous. He said to do marvelous things for me. Awesome God. Awesome God. Mighty God. Mighty God. Awesome God. Awesome God. Mighty God. Mighty God. We give you praise.
mighty God, faithful God, we bless your holy name. We've brought our dance, we've brought our worship, we've brought our hearts, we've brought our voices, we've brought the works of our hands, our substance to you. Accept it, O oh God, and let your name be praised forever. Let the seed be used for the expansion of your kingdom and to the glory of your name. Let our lives be used to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we clap for the children? If they've not already left, go for their church. Thank you. Let's welcome the choir. Hallelujah. title of our songs today say Jesus is the answer. We, we live in an increasingly complex world and the different kinds of concepts that we come across just heighten our anxiety. But God has provided a solution 2,000 years ago. We live in a very imperfect world. But the Bible says, arise, shine. For the light of God has come upon you. God has given Jesus a name that is above every other name. And that is to correct the imperfect system that man has introduced into the world. The Bible says it has obtained a name that is more excellent than any other name. Not even in these ages, but even in ages to come. Perchance God destroyed this world, it will cover. Eternity upon eternity. The name of Jesus is the valid. Hallelujah. We have come. To raise his name high today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Oh, yeah, let's go. That's why I say Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other Jesus is the way Jesus is the answer For the world today Above him there's no other Jesus is the way Sing along with us and say, Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him, there's no other. Jesus is the way. Never for what here. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him. If you have some questions in the corners of your mind, traces of discouragement, peace you cannot hide, reflections of the old past seem to face you every day. There's one thing. Let me hold on here, Jesus. Jesus is the answer the world is the world today. Above, oh, oh, oh. above him, there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him. There's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him, there's no other. Jesus is the way. Mount 
mountain that you think you cannot climb. I know your skies are dark. You think they're gonna shine. In case you don't know, I said the word of God is true. And everything is promising. He'll do it for you. That's the reason I say. Jesus is the answer the world today. Come on, man. there is no other. There's no other. Jesus is the way. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. How many of us believe that Jesus is the way? We've seen it before our very eyes. Systems fail us. Government fail us. Institutions fail us. And that's why our anchor is on God. I will say, when is that man who's, um, who put their trust in men? Um, Every other thing can fail, and we have seen them fail before our very eyes. And that's why it is very important for us to put our confidence in, in God. But we say they that put their trust in God, they are, like, they are like what? They are like Mount Zion that cannot be removed. They are like Mount Zion that cannot be removed. Our faith, our anchor is on our God. Why I thank you for that special number. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Can we just lift up our voice, please? Let's stand even as we hear God's word. Just ask the Lord to speak to you. The Bible declares it is the entrance of his word that gives light and understanding to the meek. Can you just ask the Lord to speak to you, grant you understanding, illuminate your heart, ask him for understanding this afternoon. The Bible declares unto us, it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. It is given for us to know. It is given for us to know until, until that word, you know, um, is comprehensible. Then it doesn't, it doesn't impact your life. Can you ask the Holy Spirit to minister to your, minister to your heart this afternoon? Let the word of God, let it come with power, let it come with precision to bless, to lift you, to advance you, to enlarge you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Just go ahead and ask the Lord this afternoon. The Bible says there was a man whose feet they hurt with fetters. He was laid in iron until the time that his word came. He said the word of the Lord tried him. He says even the king sent for him and loosed him and made him ruler over all his substance. Can you just ask the Lord, Father, send your word to me this afternoon. Let your word profit me, O God. Let your word bless me. Let your word lift me, O God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, let your word, Father, profit me. 
in the name of the Lord Jesus. He said, the word that was spoken, he said, did not profit them, not me mixed with faith in them that I heard it. Ask the Lord, Father, let your word mix with faith in my heart, that it become profitable in my life in the name of Jesus. I've come, Lord Jehovah, to hear from you. I've come, Lord, to receive from you this afternoon. Advance my life by your word, O oh God. Deliver me, Lord, by your word. Set me free by your word. Bless me by your word. Increase me by your word, O oh God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let there be an allocation for me this afternoon in your word. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Is someone praying? The Bible declares Numbers 14, 28, as surely as you have said to my hearing, he said, that is what I will do unto you, as surely as you have said to my hearing. What are you saying to the hearing of God's ears this afternoon? Lord, let my life never be the same. Let my life never be the same. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. Everyone that seeketh, findeth. Everyone that knocks, the door is open to him. Oh, Father, send your word to me. The Bible declares he sent his word, his word healed, delivered them out of all their destructions. He sent his word, his word healed, delivered them out of all their destructions. Lord, oh God, we ask this afternoon, even as we have come, that Lord, you will send your word to every single one of us. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let your word impact our lives. Let your word transform us. Let your word change us. Let your word bless us this afternoon in the name of the Lord Jesus. We vow again and again that, Lord, you will take the glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Please, you may be seated. Hallelujah. Over this month, we began looking at the subject of honor and for me it's something very important you know we live in a time and an age where um, um, the word honor is a very scarce word in our in our in our generation people dishonor god people have no respect for others you know dishonor human beings and for me i consider it a very very important subject not only did I consider it a very important subject, when you, leave, when you read your Bible, you know, you know, all field in your Bibles that you read, it's the word honor, honor to God, honor to parents, honor to authority. So it's a very important subject that I want to believe that will be a blessing to every single one of us. So I want you to give me your ears, ask the Spirit of the Lord that your hearts be open to receive His word this afternoon. In the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we began by we began by looking at the word honor, and I spoke to us two weeks ago, if I could remember, that the word honor is gotten from the Hebrew word, which is called tifara, which means to esteem. Honor means to esteem. Honor means to give value to a thing or a person. Honor means to discern. Honor means to recognize the uniqueness in a person. Honor means to celebrate and respect someone. Honor means to appreciate a person. Honor means to have favorable regard to a person. So when we, are, when we are talking about the subject of honor, all we are saying is that it means to esteem, to give value to a person or a team. It means to discern, recognize the uniqueness in a person, to celebrate, respect someone, appreciate a person, have favorable regard to a person, and you will agree with me, we honor certain people because we believe they have some perceived value and because of their position. There are people today we honor because of their position in society. There are people today we honor because we perceive um, um, a value in their life. So we honor them. And I told us that how you treat someone resembles the honor or dishonor that you have for that person. So. When I see you treat a person, I can, I can deduce from that whether you honor the person. If I see the way you treat someone, I can also deduce whether you dishonor the person. So the treatment that you give to a person is a message to the person that you honor him. It's a message to the person that you dishonor him. 
So we must have this at the back of our minds. You know, there are some times that our actions speak louder than words. You may not say anything, but your actions, your treatment, is a message to the person that you honor him. It's your message to the person also that you dishonor him. You may not say it verbally with your mouth, but your actions prove to the person that the treatment that you have communicated to the person is a sign of your honor to the person. It's also a sign of your dishonor to the person. So this is very important. And we also say that honor is a seed. Honor is a seed because it's a seed that can give you access. It's also a seed that can become a barrier that can close doors. There are people today that have you know, um, um, gotten access to some people, gotten access to you know, you know, you know, some certain things in life simply because of the way they have communicated honor to a person. There are also people today who you know, doors have been slammed against them simply because of also the way they have dishonored someone. So we say that honor is a seed that can open doors to us. Honor also can be a seed that can become a barrier and slam doors against you. So this is very important. And I said to us two weeks ago also that in order for us to fully comprehend the subject of honor, we must see honor in three perspectives. You know, we can't talk about honor without having the understanding of these things. And the first one is that we must understand that first, honor is a virtue. It's a virtue. It's an essential part of our being. You know, a man cannot honor, a woman cannot honor when he or she is not an honorable person. There is nobody that can give what they don't have. So in order for you to communicate honor, that means you're a man of honor. In order for you to communicate honor, that means you're a woman of honor. If you yourself, you're not an honorable person, there is no way you can communicate honor to someone. So we must understand this, that honor is a virtue. It's an essential part of our being. If you don't have it in you, you cannot give it out. So first of all, when we talk about the subject of honor, it first begins with the quality of our spirit. It begins with the quality of our spirit. If it is there, it is there. If it is not there, it is not there. And that is the reason why some people struggle with that subject because it is not ingrained in them. It is not, it is not in them. So no matter what you say, they can't communicate honor because it is not in them. So we must understand, first of all, it's an essential part of our being. So if we can comprehend this subject of honor, the first thing that you must understand that honor is a virtue. If you understand it's a virtue, then you will make a conscious effort to make sure that this virtue becomes part of you. There are virtues today that we talk about in Christianity that makes us who we are as believers. Honor is one of them. Honor is a virtue. If you don't have it, please, I want to encourage you. Begin to make conscious effort that this becomes part of you. The second thing that we talked about is that honor is also a revelation of your character. And your character is a summation of your process or your training. Honor is a revelation of your character. And your character is summed up by the processes or your training. So when you find people, when you find people that cannot, cannot communicate honor to someone, when you find people who cannot honor people, is, is a message that they are sending to you that, you know, that their training is defective. They have not been properly trained. And that's why, by God's grace, we are taking time to be able to communicate this subject so that every single one of us can, you know, can have an understanding of it. Oftentimes, I don't blame people for the things that they do because... You know, first of all, you need to ask yourself the question, have they been taught? Have they been trained? You can't start blaming a child when you have not given that child the proper training. So when you give someone training, and then because you have given the person a training, there's an expectation. The, most, most of us have gone through the four walls of an institution. We've gone through the four walls of a school. The reason why our lecturers give us, you know, examinations at the end of their of their, of their you know, teachings or their lectures to us is because they want to, because they want to, they want to, examine, in, to examine us to find out whether what they have communicated to us has been understood. But they can't give you an exam when they, have to, when they haven't taught you. 
Nobody gives anybody an exam when they haven't taught, when they haven't been taught. So we can't blame people for some of their actions because sometimes people have not been taught properly. But when people are taught, then you can then hold them accountable. So we said honor is a revelation of your character. And when you find people who don't honor, it reveals the defect in the process of your training. So when a man is well trained, when a man is well cultured, you know, honor becomes a natural, you know, thing, a natural part of him. It's something natural, he doesn't, he or she doesn't struggle to, to communicate it. Why? Because it's, 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 it's become part and parcel of him. So we must have this at the back of our minds. So when I see someone that dishonors God, when I see someone that dishonors a human being, you know, part of the message that the person is sending to me is that this person has not been well trained, this person has not been well cultured. Part of the things that we were taught growing up when we were very little is to show respect and honor to those who are older than us. You know, these days we don't communicate such even to our younger ones. Growing up, you hardly see an adult where you are and you're sitting down and the adult is standing up. It is not done. In fact, the adult will look at you and in the, person's, in the person's mind, the person will be thinking, has this one been properly taught? Because if he has been properly taught, he will understand, no, I can't be an adult and I'm sitting down and he that is a young man is standing up. These are part of the training that we received while we were growing up. But these days you can see, and the, even the young man will ask you after all, did I not pay for the seat? So we live in a time, the generation where people, people don't have respect and regard for anybody anymore. They think we are all mates, we are all at the same level. After all, the money he paid is the same money I paid, so why should I stand up for him? So that's the generation that we, we, we find ourselves, and that is very dangerous. There is a place of honor for parents. There is a place of honor for all. There is a place of honor for constituted authorities. So we said the second thing is that honor is a revelation of our character. The third thing, if we're able to comprehend the subject of honor, is that we must understand that honor is a law. It's not just a law because it is one of the Ten Commandments that we should honor the Lord or we should honor our father or our mother. No, it is much more than that. It's a law because many spiritual possibilities are communicated when the place of honor has been respected. There are so many spiritual possibilities many of us will never enter into because we have not done what obeyed the place of honor. And this is very important. There are some things that as believers, no matter how much you pray, no matter how much you study, you may never receive some things from God and you may never receive some things from human beings. Why? Because those things can only be received or begotten when you have sincerely honored, those that honored God and honored such human beings from your heart. So it's not just a law because, you know, it's there as part of the Ten Commandments. No, much more than that, there are so many spiritual possibilities that we may never enter into. Why? Because the place of honor has not been communicated effectively. When you read Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 7, the Bible says, without every contradiction, it said, the less is blessed of the what? Of the better. So until you exalt a being, there is nothing that moves or flows from that being to you. Without every contradiction, it says the less is blessed of the better. This is something very important. No matter how much a person prays, there are some things that honestly you cannot get until you have honored God. So you can pray from morning till night. And honestly, such things can never happen. Why? Because God is saying to you, the only way you can receive this is only when you honor me. So there is a place of honor.
So having said that, it's very important for us to understand, we began speaking about the categories of people that we must honor. And we said that the first being that every single one of us as human beings must honor is God. God must be the first person that we must honor in our lives. When you read the Bible, there are biblical you know, instructions of whom we should honor. So the Bible tells us of people that we should honor. And we're going to look at all those, all those, all the people that God has told us to honor. But first of all, we it must first our honor must first of all begin with God. So the first person to honor in our lives is God Himself. When you read Revelation chapter four and verse eleven, Revelation chapter four and verse eleven, the Bible says, "Thou art worthy to receive what." Thou art worthy to receive glory. Thou art worthy to receive honor. Thou art worthy to receive power. He said, for thou hast created all things for thy pleasures. They are and they were created. He says, Revelation chapter 4 and verse 11. Revelation chapter 4 and verse 11, please. Can you project that in King James Version? Revelation chapter 4. And verse 11. Let's read together, please. It says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to do what? To receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are, and we are created. God is worthy to receive what? Glory. God is worthy to receive honor. So he becomes the first being that you and I must communicate honor to. Why? Because he's worthy to receive glory, he's worthy to receive honor, he's worthy to receive power. See, he has created all things for his pleasures. They are and they were created. I'm created to give God, to bring God pleasure. You were created to give God, to bring God, to bring God pleasure to God. So God must be the first being that we communicate honor to. When you read first 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 16, please. 1 Timothy 6 and verse 16. 1 Timothy 6 and verse 16. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 16, please. It says, who only has what? Immortality in his dwelling. Dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto. Whom no man has seen nor can see. To him what? To him be honor, to him be power everlasting. He dwells, he dwells in a light that no man can approach. He has immortality in his dwelling. The Bible says to him be honor, to him be power forever. So the first thing that we must communicate honor to is our God. God is worthy to receive glory God is worthy to receive honor. God is worthy to receive all adoration. So when you don't honor God, you're, 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 you're doing yourself a great disservice. So the first person that we must honor in our lives is God. And it's very important for us to understand why we should honor God. You know, I've said this often times, you know, when you tell people, when you tell people to do something and you don't explain to them the reason why they should do it, they can do it for some time out of respect. They can do it for some time out of loyalty. But it gets to a point because they don't know the reason why they are doing it, they will now begin to rebel. That's why you have rebels. Why? Because sometimes some things have not been communicated well enough to them. So they do it. It gets to a point of view, why should I even do this that I'm doing? So you see people, they rebel at times. So when we tell people to honor God, we must explain to them the reason why they should honor God. So that even when you're not there, because they now understand the reason why they should, so it shouldn't be a problem. Whether they are here, they are not in this church or not. So it's not a problem because that, that has been communicated well enough to them. They now understand that subject well enough. So says, why should I honor God? So it's very important for us to have this understanding at the back of our hearts. 
Many people today rebel because they don't understand. So they've done some things out of loyalty. They've done some things out of respect. But they get to the point, they say, you know, I can't do this anymore. Why? Because, and that's why, you know, I love our children. Most times as parents, we get angry, we get, you know, you, know, you ask your child to do something. The, the first question they ask you, why? You must explain to them the reason why. And this is very important because when you explain to them the reason why, they know the reason why you are asking them to do what they are doing. So don't just tell them, do it because I'm your father. Do it because I'm your mother. They will do it out of respect. But next time, tomorrow, they will rebel. Why? Because the reason has not been communicated to them. So why tell me do this thing? You know, oftentimes, me as a parent, I even, it gets on my, they are, they are, they are, you ask them to, Ask them to do 10 things. They will ask you the first thing that, why should I do this? And because of the upbringing that we, we received ourselves, you know, we, we, are not, we are not allowed to, you don't question anything. So we move like zombies. Do this, you just do it. And oftentimes, most times we are doing it, but in our heart, you know, we, are, we know in our heart. If it is possible for us to even rep, we will. But that's not the generation that we are bringing up. So we must be able to communicate to people the reason why they should do things that they do. So why should I honor God? The first reason why we should honor God is that we honor God. The reason why you should honor God is because of who he is. Because of who he is. We must understand that there, there has never been, nor will there be any God like our God. There is no one in any position of power or influence who can claim such honor as our God. We honor God for who he is. There is no God like him. In Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 5, Isaiah 45 and verse 5, please. 5 and 6, Isaiah 45, 5 and 6. He says, I am the Lord, and what? There is none else, there is no God beside me. He says, I gathered thee, though thou hast not known me. Verse 6, please. He said, that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord and there is no one else. So we honor him because of who he is. There is no God like him. There is no God in, 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 you know, in, the, in, in the league of our, the God that you and I serve. There is no God like him. There is no one that will ever be like him. So we honor him because of who he is. So we must, you, you, we must have that at the back of The reason why I honor God is just because of there is no God like him. We can search all through eternity. We will still find no God like our God. There is no one like him. So the first reason why we honor him is because of who he is. Number two, why should I honor God? Because he is your father. What did I say? God is your father. We have earthly fathers, but the truth also is that we have heavenly father. If truly you are a child of God, that means you have a heavenly father. And we're commanded to honor what? Our father and our mother. So the same way we communicate honor to our earthly fathers, we must also communicate honor to what? To our heavenly, if we believe that we're children of God. That means we are not bastards. We are not illegitimate children. Remember the Bible says, it says we have no longer received the spirit of adoption whereby we can cry. We have no longer received the spirit of fear again, but we have received the spirit of adoption where we can cry what? Abba, Father. That God is our source and our sustainer. So I have a heavenly father. When you read Matthew chapter 6, all plethora of all filled in Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 1, please. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 1. Matthew 6 and verse 1, he said, Take heed that you do not, that you do not your arm before men, to be seen of them, otherwise you have no reward of what? Of your father, who is where? Who is in heaven? 
Matthew chapter 6 and verse 4, please. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 4. He said, that thy arms may be in secret. And what will happen? And thy father, which seeth in secret himself, shall reward thee openly. Matthew chapter, six, Matthew chapter 6 and verse 6, please. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 6. He said, but thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closest. And when thou hast shut the door, pray to thy father, which is in secret. And thy father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 8, please. Matthew 6 and verse 8. He said, but be ye not therefore like unto them. For your, for your father knoweth those things which you have need before you ask them. Matthew 6 and verse 9, please. Matthew 6 and verse 9. It says, After this manner, therefore, pray ye, what? Our father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Matthew 6 and verse 14, please. Matthew 6 for 14. It says, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father will also do what? Will also forgive you. Matthew, 14 verse 15, Matthew 6 verse 15, please. Verse 15 of that. He said, but if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will what your father forgive what your trespasses. Matthew 6 and verse 18, please. Matthew 6 and verse 18. Say that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto your father which is in secret. And your father which he in secret shall reward thee openly. Matthew 7 and verse 11. Matthew 7 and verse 11, please. Matthew 7 and verse 11. It says, if ye being evil, if ye then being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall what? Your father, which is in where? In heaven, give what? Good things to what? To them that ask him. So, the reason why I must honor God is because God is my father. I honor him because he's my father. If I can honor my earthly parents because they are my father and they are my mother, then God also deserves his honor because he's my heavenly father. We already hear all of you that it's talking about our father who is in heaven. Tell yourself you're not a spiritual bastard. You have a father who is in heaven, who takes care of you, watches over you. This is a God that neither sleeps nor slumbers. While you are asleep, he's awake. Fought battles for many of us that you are not even aware of. Someone once said, if God were to open our eyes to see some of the things that he has averted in our lives, Honestly, many of us will be shocked. Some of them, you can't see them. So that your heavenly father deserves all the honor. So we honor him because he is our father. He is our father. The third reason why I must honor God is that God alone is the creator of the heavens and the earth. And he's the one that sustains it. I honor him because he's the one that has created these heavens and the earth. I didn't create it. You didn't create it. It is not my father or my mother that created it. It is not your father or your mother that created it. The heavens and the earth were created by God. Read Revelation chapter 14 and verse 7, please. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 7. Let's read. It says, saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him that what? That made the heavens and the earth and the seas and the fountains of the waters. He's the one that made the heavens and the earth. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. In the beginning, what what? In the beginning, God created what? The heavens and the earth. Psalm 121 and verse 1. David said, I will lift up my eyes to the hills, to the mountains. Whence will my help come from? He says, my help can only come from the one that has what, what, made the heavens and the earth. Psalm 24 and verse 1. It was David that was speaking. 
So I, I honor God. I honor God because I understand that, look, the heavens and the earth were made by him. He's made it. So that's the reason why we must honor him. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Says all the people and all that dwell therein. For he has founded it upon what? Upon the waters, established it upon the floors. That's our God. And the Bible tells us he sustains this world by the word of his power. You know, Jesus was asking a question. And that's why we must honor this God. He says, some of you, just by being anxious, is able to just add just one cubit of hair to your hair. He said, how many of you can do that? Just a, a, just a, a tiny bit on your hair. We don't have the power to create. So we must honor the one that has made the heavens. And the earth, and the one that sustains it by the word of his power. So when you when you understand this, you don't need anybody to motivate you. You don't. How many of us can you can you can make your your your, your, your hand to, you, you can add a hair to your hair, you can make your, your hands to grow. Nothing. We cannot, we cannot do anything. So we must honor this God that has made all things. So we understand, we know the reason why we should honor God. Then, how then should I honor God? So you now know why. Then the next thing is, how then should I honor him? So, the first way we honor God is through our obedience. What did I say? Through our obedience. So, when you honor God, you simply surrender to his will. You simply surrender to his instructions. You don't ask him questions. It's only God that we are allowed to behave like zombies. To every other man, we are allowed to ask questions. Yeah. Men that had great work with God were men that behaved like zombies. They threw away their wills, they threw away their own plans, their agendas, and they just said yes to God. So we, we honor God through our obedience. Say whatever he tells you to do, do it. You know, many of us here think we are wiser than God. Many of us here think we are more intelligent than God. So when God gives us an instruction, we sit down again to begin to analyze it. Does he add up? And when he doesn't add up, most times we fail to obey him. You know, it's only in the eyes of God that one plus one can become hundred. And one plus one, God can tell you it's hundred. It's not a lie because he can make it to be hundred. Is whatever he calls. And that's why the Bible says God cannot lie. That's the reason why he cannot lie. Because whatever he says becomes it. That's why he's God. He has the ability, he has the power to make one plus one to become hundred. But as human beings, we are limited. So we... Honor God through our obedience. And we saw that in the life of a man called Abraham. In Genesis chapter 12, beginning from verse 1 to 3, the Bible says God came to this man and told him, leave your father, leave your man, leave your country, leave your kindred to a land that I will show you. And the Bible said this man, and God made so many promises. By the time you get to verse 4, the Bible says, and the man departed as God had told him. Unfortunately, there are so many believers who are 
analytics. They just analyze everything, eh? It's good to analyze. But the Bible tells us that the foolishness of God is wiser than the wisdom of men. What you think doesn't make any meaning. Even God in his foolishness, God says, my foolishness is even wiser than your own wisdom. So the Bible says, Abraham departed as the Lord has spoken unto him. And Lot went with him. And Abraham was 70 and 5 years old when he departed out of Haran. So we see that in the life of Abraham. Abraham obeyed God through his obedience. He honored God through his obedience. When you read Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 8, please, can you project that for me? Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 8. Because we must understand this in this context. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 8. It says, by faith, when he was called to go out into a place which he should, which he should after receive an inheritance, he did what? He obeyed and he went out. Not what? Not knowing whither he went. Let's be honest. Ask yourself that question. How many of us will even follow such a man? Many of us this day will castigate such a man. Say, uh, you say God spoke to you and told you to go where? I don't know. Just let's just keep going. It's not me and you. Just go. I can't go with you. No, you must tell me. If it is God, he must have told you where he's taking you to. But the Bible says he, not knowing where he went, he just, you know, sometimes when we read some things, let's sit down and just ponder over it for some time. This was a man that had a wife and had servants under him. Just woke up one morning and said, look, everybody, let's go. Ah, Oga, where are we going? I don't know. Just follow me. Let's be going. How many of us? If, if almost everybody here would say, Oga, just go. Just go. When you finally get there, just tell us. We'll come and meet you there. But that's how that's the that's that's what be the behavior of most people. Say no, uh, this God Muslims have spoken to this man. I'm not sure it's not. That's the truth. We will analyze it. No, I'm not sure. Ha. God just told you to go, go where, nowhere. So just be roaming around. No, Aga, it is not me and you. Just go. But that's the reality. He said, not knowing whither he went. It never made any sense. But the man was honoring God through his obedience. God, I may not understand. People may even ask me, because it sounds foolish. Could you imagine? I tell you now, ah, let's go. Or, ah, where, Pastor, where are we going? I don't know. Just follow us. Let's be going. Ah, Pastor, uh, no, uh, I, I, I don't follow that kind of person. You must tell us where we are going. But that's the reality of the man. He was just following God, not knowing where he was going. So we honor God through our obedience. And that's why I said sometimes, look, many people have analyzed and analyzed God out of their lives because everything must make sense to them. We live in an educated world. People, people, are, people are knowledgeable. So everything must make sense to them. If it doesn't make sense, then it cannot be God. So the man honored God through his obedience. He went not knowing where he went to. So that's the first way we honor God. The second way we honor God is that we honor God with our temple. And how, what do I mean by that? We honor God with our bodies. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 18, please. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 18. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 18. We read 18 to 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 18 to 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 18 to 1 Corinthians chapter, sorry, 6, not 16. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 18 to 20, please. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 18 to 20. 
Let's read together. He said, flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committed, committed fornication sinneth against his own body. Verse 19, please. He said, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. Verse 20, please. Say, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So when you understand this, that look, that one of the ways that you honor God is you honor God with your body then the truth is that you will not abuse your body. Uh, and let me say this. You know, every time we talk about abusing the body, you know, most times as believers, we zero our mind only to fornication and adultery. Anything that you do that abuses your body, honestly, is a sin against God. There are people here, your, your, challenge, may not, your, challenge, your challenge may not be that you're sleeping with a man or you're sleeping with a woman or you're having extramarital affairs, or you're, you know, as a young man, you're fornicating. It may not be your challenge. But your challenge is that that body, which God says is his temple, you're defiling it. You're abusing it. You know, there are sometimes we do so many things to this body without knowing that we're abusing it. So we think it's only the one that has committed fornication and adultery that is accountable to God. No. If you also abuse that body, you're accountable to God. There are so many of us here who... You know, the way we walk around the clock. I'm not saying working hard is not good. But there's a way you walk and you abuse this body so much that you, you get every, everything has a limit. It was in Exodus chapter 31 and verse 17. The Bible told us that God had created everything in six days. And the Bible said on the, in the seventh day he did what? He rested and was, was, and was refreshed. So if I overwork this body, it's also a sin against God. So the same way God is holding the one that has committed fornication and adultery, is the same way God will also hold me accountable. So it's not just, just by sleeping with it. No. When you understand that your body is, it says is the term. So I honor God with my body. So how I treat this body is very important to God. It is is a sign of my honor to him. God, I understand that this is your temple. And here, if you sleep too much, also is a sin. <laughs> it's not just by working too much. You sleep too much, you're abusing the body. It's a sin. From morning till night, you sleep and... Uh -uh. You are abusing the body. Because there's a place for the body to walk. And when that body is not put to work, it's an abuse. So we must balance things. So ask your neighbor, are you honoring God with your body? Which one are you doing? Working too much or sleeping too much? Uh, which one? Hallelujah. So we honor God with what? With our bodies. Honor God with your bodies. Very important. Don't abuse it. Don't abuse it. Don't abuse it. Don't abuse it. You know, you know people don't understand this. But there are people that have died before their time. Because the truth is this. There is a level of deterioration that the body will suffer. The spirit in you will no longer be able to stay there. What he will do, the spirit will check out. And that's why human beings die. The spirit knows that, no, this body has deteriorated to a level that I cannot, I cannot be in that body anymore. Don't destroy your body. So we honor God with our bodies because our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. God lives and dwells in it. 
The third way we honor God, we honor God with our talents. We honor God with our talents. When I'm talking about our talents, is our God-given abilities, is our God-given skill. We honor God with our ability. We honor God with our talent. When we read Matthew chapter 25 and verse 14 to 30, many of us, we know the story of the talent. A man was going, and the Bible says he handed talent to his servant. To one he gave five, to another he gave two, to another he gave one. The one he gave five, put, he, put the five into use. The one he gave two, put the two into use. But the one he gave one, the Bible says he went and dug the talent that the, father, the, the, the master gave him. And when the master returned, the master was so angry. He said, why didn't you put this one talent I give you into use? Why, why, did you, why did you have to dig the ground and hide it there? So meaning that everything that God has given us, God expects us to put it into use. Whatever ability that you have, first of all, it must be to serve God and to serve his interest. If there is, and I believe, I sincerely believe, and I stand to be corrected, but I believe that there is nobody God has not given something. There is nobody. The Bible says when he called them, there was no one that he didn't give anything. Though he gave them, it was in, it was, it was, it was in different measure. One, five, one, two, one, one. But every single person received something. So when you fold your hands, it's a message to God that you dishonor him. The Bible says, what have you, what do you have that you have not, what? You have not received from him. So if you have received it from him, why make boast of it? I think it was 1 Corinthians chapter 4, if I'm correct. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 17 or verse 7. Say, so what is it that you have that you have not received from him? If you have received it from him, then why make boast of it? You honor God with your talent. There are many skillful people here. There are many talented people here. But the question is, what are you using your talent to do? What are you using your skill for? It's not, it's not yours. God gave it to you. The same way God was angry and collected that one that he gave that man because he was not putting it. Why? Why? Because that's how God, that, 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 that's how, that, that's how God is. If I've given it to you and you're not using it, let me collect it. I'll give it to the one who will what? Put it into use. Many years back, someone here went for an interview. Um, um, it, was in, it was in a company in Boots. And what was the interview? They called him. Part of the interview, he just came that time in the church. He said, okay, that he wanted to join the technical. He learned how to be setting up the projector. So they came, he, came, he went for the interview. And they told him that part of the interview, they brought... His, he was, because he was, sharing, he was sharing the testimony in church. He said the part of the interview was they brought the projector, everything, because he said that will be part of his job. Do you understand? To be able to um, you know, do presentation. But part of the job also will be for him to set up the projector. That was the interview. I said because he has learned it in church. That was where he learned it. That was how he passed that interview. Please don't waste, don't think, don't think, don't think you're wasting time in the house of God. Another lady was sharing her, her testimony many years back, involved with the youth arm of the church. Went to one financial firm for placement and never had any experience. And the question the man was asking, what have you been doing? And she began narrating to the man you know, what she does as part of the, you know, uh, youth executive of the church. See, the man was just interested. After listening, you know, they offered him the role. A very big financial company. Don't think you're wasting your time. Don't think you're wasting your time. I'll leave the next one. My time is up. I want us to close. 
can you just lift up your voice and ask the Lord in whatever way you have dishonored him? Just ask him. Tell him first of all that you are sorry. Just tell him that you are sorry. God deserves all the honor. He deserves all the honor. Worthy to receive glory. Worthy to receive honor. Worthy to receive power. He has created all things for his pleasure. They are and they were created. Just ask him today, Lord, I repent. I'll turn a new leaf. I'll honor you. You are my father. I'll honor you because you are the one that has made the heavens and the earth. I'll honor you because of who you are. I will honor you with my body. I will honor you through obedience to your instructions and to your word. I will honor you with the ability that you have given me, with the talent, the skill that you have given me. I will not be idle. I will honor you, Lord. Father, we thank you this afternoon. Thank you for your word that we have heard. We receive help from you, O God. And Lord, wherever we need to, Lord, make amends, O God. We receive grace to make amends in those areas. We ask that, Lord Jehovah, beginning from today, we receive grace, O God Jehovah, that we become men and women of honor. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we will communicate honor to our God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, as we go into this week, Father, we commit this week into your hands. Go ahead of us. Father, level the mountains before us. Cause the crooked paths to be made straight. Give us, Lord, a resounding testimony this week. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let our life this week bring you pleasure. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, take all the glory. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Please, before we share the grace, um, I've been made to understand that there are raw chickens. So please, if you're... If you're in need of um, raw chicken, we have them available at the end of the service. Please try and collect yours. Uh, remember, this is the house of God. Let there be orderliness and let everything be done what decently. We are men of honor. Hallelujah. Let's share the grace in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now forevermore. Amen. And surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow all the days of my life and that will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week.